Amen, amen. All right, turn with me this morning to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> this morning we're going to jump into Ephesians. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible on what he has to say here. Because listen, what's on my heart this morning is it may seem like Friday night, but Sunday's on its way. Sunday's on its way. You see, we've been caught up in the Friday night atmosphere so long as a church and as a people wallowing around in self-pity and in defeat because we've been focused on the circumstance of what happened on a Friday night. But listen, we got to get our focus off of Friday night and on to Sunday morning because revival is coming in Jesus' name. Miracles are coming in Jesus' name. There's a great new move of the Spirit that's getting ready to pour out over the United States of America. I've been listening to TV evangelists and preachers and different people praying and, and almost every Everybody is preaching about end time prophecy and about revival and about things of the Lord. I'm telling you, there's a mighty move of Jesus coming and we want to be right in the middle of it. Amen. Not left behind and not ahead. But listen, you got to get your eyes off Friday night. Okay. Get your eyes off Friday night. Verse 15 says, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord, Jesus and your love for all saints. Amen. Jesus said in the New Testament, a new commandment I give to you to love one another. Yes. Paul's praying for you. He says, hey, I've heard of you, your faith and your love for one another. Amen. Yes. How difficult is it at times for us just to love one another? You see, if you're focused on Friday night and on the circumstance and you're not focused on the miracles and on Sunday and the blessing, it's hard for us to love one another at times. Amen. Let's just be honest. You, you know, people will come to me quite frequently, Pastor, I want you to know how much I just love the Lord, but I hate people. I hate people. People, they just make me so angry. People, yes, they do. You know, the church would be an awesome place if there was no people in it, amen? But there's people in it. And people being in it, there, how many of you discovered there's different personalities, there's different types, there's different likes and dislikes, and some of you, some of you got some really weird idiosyncrasies. Some of you do. Okay, let's just be honest. And, and some of you got some really, you know, serious phobias over some of the dumbest things, you know? Miss Elaine called me. Actually, my wife called me Friday. I'm driving home from work. And my wife gives me a call and she says, Kenny, Elaine just called me. There's a lizard loose in her office. And Miss Elaine, bless her heart, she has a phobia of lizards. So I said, well, I'm just coming into town. I've been out of town. I said, tell her I'll be there in about 30 minutes. And the lizard savior is on the way. It is now McLeod Enterprises lizard abatement. And so I show up at Miss Elaine's house and she has her office doors closed and these foam rubber stoppers on the bottom of the door so nothing is escaping the office. And she's sitting in there on the couch, all of her paperwork mounded up all around her on there, just working and doing her thing. And when I get in, she's like, oh, praise the Lord, you're here. There's a lizard loose in my office. It is the size of an iguana. <laughs> It is the fattest lizard I've ever seen in my life. I was afraid for my life. I said, well, man, let's go see if we can find it. So I go and I open up the office door, amen. And I go in and, and, and Miss Elaine is cautiously behind me and she stops at the office doors. Now she has a set of double doors into her office, all right, an active and a passive. And so she's got one hand like this up on the office door that opens, the other hand on the one that closes. And she's kind of half in, half out. You understand what I'm saying? And she's, now see, listen, fear is an interesting motivator. All right. So she says to me, she points and she goes, last time I saw it, it was wiggling under that basket. 
I said, well, let's see what we can find. So I start heading over there, and, and, and I'm headed this way, and she's standing, you know, like this at the door. I walk over here, and I start moving some baskets and stuff around on the floor, and I move that basket, and I, I jump up, and I go, oh, like that. Miss Elaine got a hold of the door like this, right? And like this, next thing I know, she's doing one of these. Oh! It was like, feet don't fail me now. She has a cane and a walker that she walks with. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit moved in that atmosphere. There was a healing of supernatural proportions, and she could have ran a marathon at that moment. I finally found the lizard. Remember, it's an iguana. She said it was big enough to carry her off of the chair. I that lizard was three that inches was. long. <laughs> and it was maybe the size of my finger. I caught it and I put it in a bucket and I took it outside. Amen. I said, well, we got rid of the lizard. Amen. She about locked herself in the bathroom, Jillian, because she was sure I was going to come give that lizard right to her. I might have, but I figured I done gave her heart enough of a race for one day. Amen. All right, now listen, we can allow things to get us all upset. Jesus said, love one another. He said, I did not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Now listen, here's where it gets good. May give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You see, listen, when we're struggling through life and when you got lizards loose in your office, okay, and what happens is you're focused on the circumstance that you're facing and not on the knowledge and the wisdom of who Jesus is. You see, on Friday night when Jesus went to the cross, everybody was focused on what that meant and the loss. Jesus had said before he left, in three days I would rise. You all remember that? Amen. He prophesied where he was going, what he was going to do. You know, he gave you his word. And in his word, it tells you how to live every day of your life in an attitude of praise and worship, grateful and thankful for all that God's done. But see, we lose focus on all that he's said in the midst of a Friday night experience. You see, on Friday night... Mm, mm, see, Jesus said, now come on now, in Philippians what? 4.13. Y'all know what that says? Don't that say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? How many things is all things? You see, all is all, right? That means that I can face financial challenges. I can face bad reports from the doctor. Amen. I can face my Friday night experience if my focus is on Sunday morning, which is the Word. Where is your focus today? What priority are you placing the Word in your life? Amen. He said He's going to bless you with wisdom and revelation knowledge. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. Mark 9.23, all things are possible to him who believes. 1 John 4.4, 4, greater is he that is... You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me ask you, which one of these verses are you holding on to? You see, what is your confession? Yeah. Is your confession all about the crucifixion and your Friday night experience? Or is your... Mm, you know, I love to tell the story of a little old lady that used to come to church here. Gloria Baca was her name. And she was the sweetest little old lady living on, on Social Security, retirement benefits, struggling to get by like everybody else. She was having some challenges in her life one day with some of her finances and some of her kids and grandkids. You understand what I'm saying? How many of you ever had some challenges in your life? All right, well, she was having some challenges and she came to me and she was saying to me, Pastor, you know this and this and the other thing. And, and then she got this big old smile on her face. And she said, I can't wait to see how Jesus is going to answer my prayers. 
I about had a hallelujah fit. Amen. I know pastors that don't have the same amount of faith as this little old lady on a fixed income. Amen. And then we get so caught up and concerned over a circumstance. Come on now. Instead of going to the word. All right. Are you with me this morning? You see, Jeremiah 29, 11, How many of you know what that scripture says? How many of you have that written down somewhere? You quote that, Jeremiah. He says, I know the plans that I have. Who's the you in Jeremiah 29, 11? Say, I am, I am. The, you. the you. And he says, I know the plans. Plans to do what? Oh, I got plans to trip you, knock you down, torment you. I'm on beat. Is that what it says? He said, you know what? You might be part of the family, but you the black sheep of the family. And I'm going to beat you like a red-headed stepchild. Is that what it says? Mine says, I know the plans I have for you. He said, plans to what? Prosper you and give you what? Hope. Why do you have hope in the midst of a Friday night experience? Because of Sunday. Because Sunday's on the way. Amen. You see, you got to hold on to what the Word says. Amen. He said when we read on in Ephesians, he says, In the revelation, the knowledge of him. Now listen, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. What does it mean to be enlightened? To know. To know. He, he, see, are you getting the picture here? He's wanting to bless you with wisdom and knowledge that the eyes of your understanding. What does he want to enlighten you in? His word. He wants to get you so rooted and grounded in his word so that when the Friday night experience happens in the midst of Friday, you're already looking forward to Sunday. You see, then we learn to live our life in a position of joy. In spite of circumstance, thanking God that I know, that I know, that I know. It is well with my soul. You see, nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Amen. Height, depth, width, nothing. The only thing that separates me is me. Me. I separate me. When my focus changes from what the Word says to what I understand. Come on now. To what I believe. To what I think is relevant. Right? You see, some of us have this mistake and, 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 and you talk with different people and they'll be negative about things. They say, well, I just live in the real world. Well, good for you. Because I live in the spiritual world. And my spiritual world trumps your real world every day. Because everything that happens in the real world starts in the spiritual. Jesus said, I call those things as though they aren't as they are. How about speaking your faith and not your doubt? You see, how about saying, greater is he that's in me? How about saying, I can do all things through Christ who strength? Now, come on now. Instead of quoting and misquoting, you know, the first book of Kenny. And you just separate Kenny for your name. You see, most of you are quoting your interpretation of the word. And not Jesus' interpretation. Now here we're praying. He said that the eyes be enlightened. Listen to me. I was over at... Uh, at uh, Kim and Lexi's house yesterday, and, and Lexi has this little music she shed, and uh, we were putting some power to it and getting it all hooked up for her, and, and uh, I've been really busy. I haven't been able to get her as quick as we got it done, and, and so we show up over there, and we're finally going to finish it and get it all, and she's so excited, you know. She's so excited. And so she comes out, and I say, Lexi, honey, I need to talk to you a second. I'm really sorry, but there is a, a, a shortage on breakers right now. Okay, which is a true story. Right now, there's a shortage on breakers. I said, we're going to finish everything up today, but I don't have the breakers to put into your panel yet to turn the power on. All right? So it'll be all done, but we're not going to be able to turn on the power. It's going to take about three weeks for the breakers to come. I had the breakers in my tool bags. <laughs> 
Yes, I'm just messing with her. Her face just dropped. She just dropped. And she looked at me, and, and, and in the sweetest, oh, that's okay, you know, Pastor, I understand. Then I started busting up laughing. And I pulled out the break and said, oh, honey, I'm just messing with you. I got the breakers right here. Give me about 30 minutes and we're going to have the AC on and the lights on. This thing's going to be awesome. All right. Now, listen to me. You know what your problem is? The devil keeps trying to convince you that you don't have the power, the authority of what God's given you. It's just like me sitting there holding the breaker. See, you have everything that you need. You've got all that you need. But Satan's whispering in your ear and he's trying to tell you, listen, there's a shortage of God's grace today. There's a shortage of God's mercy today. There's a short... You understand what I'm saying? The devil's trying to whisper to you about shortages that are in the word that says, my God blesses me exceedingly and abundantly above all that I think or ask. He said, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. But see, Satan's trying to make you believe something that the word doesn't say. Quit listening to Satan and his Friday nights. Focus on the word. The Bible said he wants to bless you with wisdom yes. and knowledge yes. that your eyes will be enlightened. Come on now. Man, I'm preaching way better than y'all letting on this morning. In James 1, 2, it says to count it all joy. He said, count it all joy when troubles, when trials, when things come your way because through this works patience and brings out perfection in you. Yes. Amen. It takes a little bit of fire. Come on now. Sometimes to purify. Mm. Come on now. You see, where's your focus? Is your focus on the miracles on Sunday morning? Or is your focus on the challenge of Friday night? You see, he said that the eyes of your understanding being that you may know what is the hope of his calling. How many of you know that as long as you have hope, all things are possible? Hope is a precious commodity and a precious thing. You should always be filled with hope and your hope should motivate you to faith. And once in faith, come on now, now we're back up to all things are possible. You see, when Satan attacks you and he whispers in your ear about you're not able, about you're not qualified, about now, come on, you're not saved, you're not this, you're not that, well, you're too ugly, you're too, you understand what I'm saying? He whispers some of the dumbest things to us sometimes. And we're so, come on now, we are so ignorant at times, we actually believe what he says. The Bible says he's a liar. He always was a liar. He's been a liar. He's going to be a liar. He seeks to, what's he seek to do? Kill, steal, destroy. Why would you ever believe a liar to begin with? Listen, when he whispers in your ear, what do you say back? Take a little advice from Jesus. Jesus said, it is is written. It is. Did you know Jesus said that he came, he won the victory. What victory did he win? All the victory. He won the victory over sin, the victory over death, the victory over, come on. He won all the victories. Every victory. You talk about a multi-gold medalist, amen. And he said, every mm, victory, mm, come on, I give it all to you. Yes. Quit wasting your inheritance in Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, I'm getting excited, preaching myself happy. He said the hope of his calling. Now listen, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Say, I am a saint. And if you're a saint, you are entitled to the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Amen. Are you understanding what that means? You keep praying for that rich uncle to pass away so you can get that inheritance when Jesus already said you got the inheritance in him. He already gave you your Sunday morning experience. It's about time you started walking in it. 
start claiming all that is yours in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, come on now. He said in John 14, 27, my peace I give unto you. Not the peace as the world gives, but my peace I give unto you. Do you understand that peace that he gave you? In John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The Word was with God. Everything that was, you see what I'm saying? He was there when everything was made and created. He was there when you were born and created. He saw you through the end. You understand what I'm saying? If this same him said he's going to give you that peace that he has, then what are you worried about? You understand what I'm saying? You see, back up to where it said the eyes be enlightened. What is the wisdom of the revelation knowledge of him? Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? See, stop focusing on the circumstance of Friday yes. and start worshiping on the miracle for Sunday. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You see, you've got to get so much of the word inside of you that when Satan tries to tell you any lie, that doesn't line up with what the Word says, you've got a scripture that says it is written. Amen. It is written, greater is he that is in me That's than right. you. That's right. It is written, I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. It is written, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ. you got to get all the words right. <laughs> he didn't see. Come on now. All of this. He's, man, this is getting really good now. This is getting good. He said in the inheritance of the Satan. Now, come on. And what is his exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? He just said he wants to give you his exceeding power. To those who believe. What are you believing today? Are you believing that Jesus is the King of Kings? Amen. That He's the Lord of Lords? Amen. That He's your Savior? That He's your... You understand what I'm saying? Are you believing that all things are possible to Him who believes? Are you believing that... You see what I'm saying? What is your focus today? What are you believing about yourself today? Or are you still stuck in understanding and trying to figure out what Satan whispered in your ear? Maybe even back when you were 12 years old, when you were hurt and offended by something or someone, and that past experience, failure or hurt has carried with you a whole life lifetime because you've never given it to Jesus left it at the foot of the cross and said I am beautifully wonderfully made in the image of God I was created this is you I was created for his great pleasure that's the hope of your calling you see, these scriptures in here in Ephesians, these are some of my favorite yeah. in the whole Bible because of the message that you got to pick out of it. Yeah. Amen. But if you'll get into the word, uh -huh. you'll get into the message, right. you'll get into what it says. Right. It says, as we read on his great power, that which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Now listen, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. All in all. Say, I am all in all. Jesus fills you with all in all. You see, you have to read this passage of Scripture and then make it personal. Make it personal. Put yourself in the first place position as you read this. He has blessed me with all wisdom and knowledge. He has opened my eyes. You see what I'm saying? And then listen, stop focusing on the Friday nights of your life. <laughs> and start focusing on Sundays. 
on the great moves of what? You know, God poured out his greatest act of power and strength when he reached into the pits of hell. When he reached into the pits of hell. You know, can you just picture Satan Sunday morning when he called up the grave and said, Grave? Is he still there? You know, he said in his word in three days, yeah. he's going to rise. Yeah. He said in his word, so grave, I'm just calling to check to see. You know, see, Carmen used to sing a song about this. He said, I'm just calling to check to see if, if he's still there. And grave said, hey, Satan, don't be tripping. Yeah. Okay, go shoot up, do whatever up you need to do. He's still dead. He's still in the grave. But as he's talking on the phone, he says, oh, oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> wait, oh, there's mm, somebody done rolling away the stone, yeah. Satan. You see, Jesus done came and won the victory. God reached down and poured out his ultimate test of power and strength when he raised him from the dead. If you read the word, the Bible says that Jesus went to hell. He took away the keys of hell, the power of death and the grave. Okay. Then God reached down and said, okay, buddy, you did enough butt kicking in hell. It's all over. It's time to come back. He pulled him up out of hell. And when he did, he resurrected. He rose again on the third day, just like he said he would. You see, God, if he said it, you need to believe it, and that needs to settle it. Amen. And so no matter what Satan's trying to convince you of, God's already told you that you're blessed. He's told you that you're victorious. He told you that you're a winner in him, that your righteousness is through Jesus. Amen. And so we need to start focusing on who we are in Christ. Mm. You see, listen. All things are possible to him who believes. We're going to close with this in John 15, 11. He says, my joy, my joy. Jesus said that my joy is in you so that your joy may be full. You see, your joy is full when you learn to live at peace, focused on Sunday's experiences and not on Friday's challenges. Your life is blessed. God is good. God is good. Your life is blessed. The challenges, the problems, and the Friday nights of your life are there just to remind us how great Sunday is. How faithful God is. Listen, God has never failed me. He has never failed me. And listen, I know he's never failed you because you're here this morning. Amen. He's brought you through everything that you see what I'm saying. You see, we have to start focusing on the good. We have to start believing what the word says and stop listening to that liar that's whispering in your ear. You are beautifully, wonderfully made in the image of God for his great purpose. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand.